Welcome back everybody, Todd Huey here with Lone Star Boars and Huey Outdoors. Today we're going to go over the LPMR 14 and the LPMR T, which is the thermal version. This is the LPMR T to go on a thermal. What you're going to get is just a plain looking cardboard box with the LPMR, some packaging, a card that says how to record and gives you a few tips that we're going to go over here and a couple of uh, zip ties for it. Now what these do, the LPMR 14 goes on the back of anything that, or the LPMR 14s are for night vision. They're going to connect to anything that has a PVS 14 style eyepiece on the back. The LPMR thermals are for thermals that have a PBS 14 style eyepiece. The, the Trigicons, which is a Trigicon, or the new InVision scopes, which use the same thing. And how they attach is they have a little clamp and a ring here, and you spread them out, and it, it goes right on the back of the, the optic, just like that. Now, the, the camera comes down, and I'm going to do a close-up here in just a minute. In fact, we'll do that right now. Let's get a closer angle on all this. All right, you see the LPMR 14 has these. This is just a 3D printed device with a 4K camera. It can do 4K. They're set up to do, for the thermal version, 1080p at 60 frames per second. For the night vision version, they're set up to do 1080p at 30 frames per second. Thermal version, you're able to get it with this piece here on the back that allows you to cl clip on if you want to your amber filter or your eye cup or whatever you would like to, to put on there that you would normally put on there. These two little tabs here just expand out. Now they will retain memory, so after a while it starts getting looser. So what they've done, you'll see that I've been using this one for quite a while, it's, it's loose on here. So what they've done is they've included, and you can find these anywhere, zip ties. But there's a little channel here. I'm using a tan one right now so it will stand out even better. And you can get that tight and then it's not going to move. Hold it up there. Obviously you would clip it, clip this off here. But there's, so there's a little channel here on the back and that will keep those snug and where it won't move as much during recoil. All right, the other thing that you need to know about this LPMR is on any of your scopes you have the, or PBS 14s, you have a diopter back here. Now what I found is that they're not too accurate. Two of the same devices, perfect may be one, it may be negative two, it may be whatever. So you're going to have to look through it. Since you are recording through the back of the, the eyepiece, if you wear corrective lenses, you're either going to have to wear your corrective lenses, uh, contacts, because if you adjust this to work without your corrective lens, everything's going to be blurry. I have better than 20-20 vision and what I have to do is for some reason when I'm, I'm looking through any of these scopes basically for example this one from plus two to one and or a half all looks clear to me so what I do is before I go out in the field I find out where this particular scope is the clearest for the LPMR and gets everything in focus I film a little bit and then I go back to the computer and then I'm going to mark on here where it's the clearest and that's where I get the best footage now it comes with a, 
a power cable here, USB cable. This little anchor battery pack, I got um, duct tape on it because I duct taped to the stock here. But this is $4.95. It's a 3,000 milliamp battery pack that I just got at Walmart. It will run this unit for most of the night, if not all night. I also use 64 gigabyte SD cards. The SD card, let's turn it over here where we can see if we can. So the, the SD card just plugs into the side here. Snaps into the unit. And you're good. On the top of the scope, there's a little light. Now it's not very bright. I'm probably going to have to turn off the lights in here for you to see it, which I'm going to do real quick because you need to see something on here. All right. When you format your SD card in Windows. These are set up to be formatted in FAT32. Well, the new Windows does not do that. So, when you plug in your card, let's see if we can see it. Do you see the... Okay, the, the light is flashing right here, a little blue light. It's going to flash a few times, and then it's going to go solid. When it goes solid like that, it has formatted the card to the format that the camera needs. All you have to do is unplug your battery pack, plug it back in, and now you're going to notice that it's continuously flashing. And it will continue to flash until either the battery pack runs out or until the card runs out. When the card is full, it's going to flash a, a really fast flash instead of this steady slow flash. And of course, if the battery runs out, it's not going to be flashing at all. So it is recording. It records sound and 1080p 60 frames per second right now through the scope. Now, this is a mission recorder. It's set up from the factory to record in one minute increments. So you have to record the first full minute and then after that, you can cut it off at a minute, five seconds. You can cut it off at 20 minutes. You can cut it off. You know, I let mine run all night long. And then I come back and edit everything afterwards. But it is continuous recording. And the reason it records in one minute segments is if your power does go off, if something happens, cable comes unplugged, whatever, whatever happens, the most that you'll ever lose is the last minute of video recording. Now, what I've learned is... When I leave it running all night like this, I don't have to worry about hitting record. I don't have to worry about anything like that. So I don't miss near as much footage. It's just constantly going. But what I'll do is if something really good happens and I get some great footage, I turn the scope off. And when I turn the scope off, then I get a, if I leave it off for at least a minute to two minutes, I get a black spot, a black blank couple of clips there where it's easy to find the action. So just a little tip there. So that's that's all you need to know is you must have the diopter set to perfect so you get a clear image. You must format the card when you put it in. The, the device, the LPMR, will format it again. Once it does, you plug it in, you're good to go. With these newer versions, they have memory. If I choose to, I can stop the video recording right now as long as it's been over the first minute everything will, will be recorded. I stop the video recording. When I start up, it will continue recording in order, like video one, video two, video three, before it would overwrite. So the newer models do not overwrite if you decide to turn it off for some reason. Like I said, with a 64 gig card and a 3000 milliamp battery, I can leave it running all night long and not have to worry about turning it off. That way I lose no footage. All right, we're gonna go into the video editing. Um, I use Sony Vegas, so that's what you're gonna see. But the only real thing that you're gonna to have to edit on any of this is you're going to have to crop and you're gonna to have to stitch them together, which 
Even the simplest video programs will do. So let's go to the video editing. Before we get to the editing, I'm going to show you what just a raw clip comes out looking like. This is a raw clip off of a Envision Halo 50 millimeter. As you can see, there's a lot of black area around it, so we're going to have to crop it, and it's off center, or it's not off center, but it's tilted a little bit to the left. Now, I like to keep my camera at the top. It doesn't block very much of your vision at all, but there's not much usable anything going on in the sky most of the time, so the little bit that it does block doesn't affect anything. So here you are. This is just straight out of the camera. No editing. Now we're going to go into the editing and see what that looks like. All right, here we are in Sony Vegas, which is what I use to edit, but even the most simple video editor should be able to do all this. You can drag as many clips down as you want. I have two here just for this example. I'm going to go into this first one and crop it. Again, any video editor will have crop. I'm going to line it up, get, get it straight, and cut out as much as the black as possible. Once I have it where I want it, and everything's perfectly aligned, I'm just going to close this out. And you will see, we'll let it play through the end of this first clip and into the next clip that has not been cropped yet, and you'll see the difference. Full screen and then the unedited. Now all you need to do to get the next clip to be exactly like the first one is copy and paste. Now I forgot to copy, so here I go again and it didn't work. So what I need to do is go back, I copy this first clip, and I paste attributes to the second clip. And I could do this for every clip in this string after. If for some reason you move the camera and it's not exactly the same as all the first ones, you just split it at that point, crop, copy again, and you could do everything after that point. It's really very simple. And the editing is done now. Okay guys, I hope you learned something from the video. Here it is again on the back of a Trijicon Reap IR. The advantage to this system is you can let it run cons constantly. You don't have to worry about hitting record. You don't have to worry about on the Trijicons going in and turning video out. It records a much higher resolution image. It's still a little bit off compared to what you're actually seeing through the scope, but is way closer than what the video out is. So way higher quality video, simpler system where you don't lose as much. You don't have to remember to hit record as long as you set it up at the first. You can go to HueyOutdoors.com and they are in the accessory section, the one for the PBS 14 and the one for the thermal scopes are both listed there. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to comment below.